Hello! This is day four of Who. Well, would you looky looky here? We have something that was sort of the standard for Doctor Who from here on out. The pseudo-historical. Now, that word might confuse you, so let me describe what it is basically. <coughs> Where the setting is somewhere in the past, but the story is mostly sci-fi driven. Uh, for example, the caveman section of Unearthly Child can be viewed as a pure historical once you rule out the TARDIS being involved. Historicals were reacting to moments in real history. Um, another example f um, from before this was the Aztecs, where the crew would face against the ancient civilization, and in the Reign of Terror, which was based during, well, the, the Reign of Terror. They served the purpose at the time. As I said before, Doctor Who started as an educational program, with the sci-fi adventures to teach them science, while the historicals were for the history. We're not covering pure historicals after this, as it has been mandated by Nemesis Vids. I uh, don't know exactly why. Here, um, here's his statement on the whole thing. I hate learning! Yeah. Not shocked that was what he said. But to be fair, the show would kind of... notice that people seem to love the Daleks. Oh, wait, let me rephrase that. But to be fair... The show, more or less, would coast on the success of the Daleks and all the other stuff, so the people were more prone to the running around strange worlds thing and all the goofy sci-fi stuff in general, so I think the historicals, the historicals were definitely less popular, so you more or less saw the idea of getting the best of both worlds, allowing to explore at least historical settings, but still being allowed to you know, give the people that fun adventure that they want. So after the second Troughton story in Season 4, known as the Highlanders, there were no more pure historicals, with one exception in, all the way in Season 19. And this story, The Time Meddler, happened in Season 2, to give you guys some perspective. So, how does this new attempt at this new story model stack up? Well, all in all, it's a fun romp. At least for the most part. And does some and does something for the first time. It introduces us to a Time Lord villain, who of course goes by the name of the Monk. Uh, so I'm calling the meddling monk, but I'm calling him the Monk because, well, that just sounds really silly if the Doctor addressed him as the meddling monk all the time. His whole deal is to go to different points in history and improve things, quote unquote. Of course, the Doctor has to stop him because of the whole You can't rewrite history! It's no one's place to do so! Blah, blah, blah! You get the gist. From there, the Monk's whole plot sparks a mystery, where the Doctor and crew discover items that should be absolutely nowhere near this timeline that they've landed in. 1066, if you want to be specific. Of course, they more or less do a big runaround. This is Doctor Who. Get used to that. And it's fairly simple, with the Vikings showing up and... The Doctor more or less having goofy-ass banter with the monk. Uh, I mentioned that this story is simple, but it has some fun moments in it, and some very nice moments, too. <coughs> A big moment was the opening of the story itself, where the Doctor is ch chatting with the current companion, v Vicky. She came in the story right after Susan left. She's more or less... She sort of just fills that role. She acts very granddaughterly... Though, at least from what I've seen of her, I've only seen this in a few other stories, she's less of a screamer for sure. Uh, and Ian and Barbara are gone. They left in the story right before this, of course, The Chase, which was another Dalek story. Their exit, of course, made the entrance of Stephen Taylor. I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I miss you, babe. And I don't want to miss a thing, cause even when I dream of you... Taylor, not Tyler. That was pretty good. Nobody asked you. Anyway, he was brought in sort of at the tail end of the, of, of the previous story. He plays the role of the, of the skeptic at the start. The opening scene is sort of can, sort of very similar to the Doctor's conversation with the school teachers and Unearthly Child, only played much more faster and tongue-in-cheek, sort of being 
the Cliff Notes version of that scene. Oh, by the way, you're in the TARDIS. It goes in time and space, blah, blah, blah. I'm the Doctor. Woohoo! He doesn't say woohoo. That would be too amazing if he said woohoo. I don't really have much to say past that. I mean, yeah, you kind of know the format already. Once the once they discover the TARDIS, well, the other TARDIS, because, you know, Time Lord and all, it becomes a simple matter of tricking him and them beaming, and them, you know, roop, rooping away while the monk is stuck. For now. He actually makes one more uh, appearance in the TV show and has made other appearances in comics and audio dramas after that. But, like I said, the story's just a simple, fun romp. It's not overcomplicated. Another good moment is when Vicky and Stephen Taylor... The sweetest dream would never do. I'd still miss you, babe. And I don't want to miss a thing. I fucking said Taylor. Back on track. When, 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 when Vicky and Stephen find the monk's TARDIS... I generally like it because it was a strong cliffhanger to left to a to a certain episode of the story, and you know completely revealed that hey, there's another Time Lord, that means business, and if anyone gets me, yeah, they're still technically not called Time Lords in this, but that's what they are, so I'm going on what they are. <coughs> so sue me. So, what can I tell you about this one? It it it's fun. You can't. I can't really throw any ire at it. It's significant because it introduces us to another member of the of the Doctor's race and shows that, well, they're not all as nice and well, stand for the good of the of humanity and all of time like our good old Doctor is. Uh, Peter Butterworth who plays the monk, plays him very kind of what's the word. He plays a polar opposite to Hartnell. Where Hartnell is someone who has a cool head and stays serious, the monk sort of has a cackle to him. He, He's having fun while he does it. I couldn't help but think that he's very Troughton-esque in his, in his whole ideas, especially the whole rebellious streak, which the second Doctor is very well known for and we'll definitely get to talk about sometime soon. So, it's good to see that the pseudo-historical proved to be good enough to make an you know, historical saying work in the mall that they had to do to keep things going. All in all, this is important because the pseudo-historical became the show's bread and butter. And, well, butter's good. Especially the movie. Hugh Jackman wears a cowboy hat. I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep cause I miss you babe And I don't want to miss a thing Cause even when I dream of you The sweetest dream would never do I'd still miss you babe And I don't want to miss a thing